Chapter 5 Will tried to swallow, but his mouth and throat were really dry. He felt something tap him on the shoulder. For half a second, he thought it was Sam licking him again. But there was nothing warm or wet about it this time. Will felt it again. Something hard and sharp was tapping him on the shoulder. Something cold. Something made of metal. Sam's voice boomed in his ear. Void! It's a void! Will spun round and his heart leapt into his mouth. He stood face to face with a giant metallic spider. An angry red light glowed in the centre of its gunmetal head. Glistening tar was dripping in pulses from its sharp fangs. Its black body was made of cold steel. Will was frozen with fear. The void was even worse than he had imagined. There was an explosion of noise as the giraffes woke up and rushed around in confusion and alarm. Necka called out to them, Everyone, stay together, stay close. The giraffes quickly gathered around Will, Sam and Necker, all staring in fear at the void. Clicker clacker. Clicker clacker. The void clicked and clacked its fangs together and crouched low to the ground. It looked ready to pounce. At that very moment, there was a terrible hissing sound behind them. Will realised with horror that the first void had distracted them on purpose. Four more voids with burning red eyes had sneaked into the camp from the far side. Immediately, the giraffes began to panic. One of the voids leapt into the air towards the group. As it passed, high over all of their heads, the void spun a cable behind it. Another void leapt over them, leaving behind another curving cable. And then the voids seemed to come from all sides, spinning their cables furiously. Clicker, clacker. The first void, the leader, urged them on. Too late, Will realised what the voids were doing. They were all going to be trapped inside this web of metal. The giraffes were now charging about in panic. Will was suddenly knocked sideways by a flying hoof and he stumbled into the wall. As he steadied himself, his hand closed around one of the smaller rocks. Without thinking, Will picked up the rock and threw it as hard as he could at the void leader. The rock arced across the clearing and struck the void flush on the side of its head. The giant spider machine snapped its head round to stare directly at Will. Its red eye narrowed as it scuttled forwards towards him, its front legs raised menacingly. Will tried to move, but his legs refused. For several seconds he watched helplessly as the void leader closed the distance between them. Suddenly he felt himself lifted off his feet and thrown sideways. Will grabbed the collar of Will's jacket with his teeth. Sorry, Sam grabbed the collar of Will's jacket with his teeth and had tossed Will over the wall, clear of the danger and the void's web. Miraculously, Will landed on his feet. Run! shouted Sam, who was clambering clumsily over the wall. Will broke into a sprint between the trees. Keep running! urged Sam galloping up beside him. Somewhere close behind them, there was a loud hiss. Don't look back! Just keep going! Will did as he was told. His heart was pounding, his breathing ragged, 
but fear was firing the muscles in his legs, driving him on. He plunged through a narrow gap between two tree trunks, but tripped on a root. He sprawled to the ground, landing with a hard blow that knocked the air out of his chest. In the gloom, Will looked up from the earth for Sam. The galloping giraffe hadn't noticed Will fall over. He was charging away through the woods. Sam! wheezed Will. Stop! Within just a few seconds, the air began to glow with a red light. Still fighting for breath, Will sat up and twisted round, searching for the danger. He tried to stand up, but his burnt-out legs protested and he crumpled to the earth. Again, and he spotted it, a slit of harsh crimson light focused directly on him, was approaching rapidly between the trees. Clicker, clacker, clicker, clacker. The void leader gnashed its fangs together and leapt into the air. Will ducked and the metal creature passed over his head. A glistening table formed inches above him. Before Will could react, the void jumped again and again back and forth. It worked at an incredible speed, weaving the cables into a prison. No! 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 shouted Will. He tried to think of something he could do, but his mind was a mess. He thrust his hands into his pockets, frantically searching for anything to defend himself with. His fingers closed around the torch, and he whipped it out and pressed the button. The torch bucked violently in his hand as the bright beam burst out. The void leader hissed loudly. Will tried to focus the beam on the metal creature above him. The light swept across the trees overhead, illuminating the canopy. Out of the corner of his eye, Will noticed a number of huge, drooping flowers the size of a church's bell amongst the leafy branches. And then, just as Will managed to light up the void, to his horror, the shuddering torch slipped from his sweaty grip. The torch went out, fell to the ground and started to roll. Will lurched forwards to grab it, but the torch picked up speed and rolled between a gap in the crisscrossed cage. Will stuck his arm through the gap, straining his shoulder against the hot metal cable, reaching, reaching for the torch, which now lay just a fingertip out of reach. Help! Will shouted. Somebody help! Tears prickled his eyes. Sam! Anyone! Although his vision was blurry, Will thought he saw a dark shape moving rapidly through the trees. He wiped his eyes and blinked. Someone else was in the whispering wood. Someone dashing and weaving towards him. Someone with silvery, purple hair. Rhea, he said in astonishment. Will, came the reply.